Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back for another lesson in the Microsoft AZ-800 course. Today's lesson is all about storage options in Hyper-V. For those of you who don't know what Hyper-V is, I encourage you to first watch the previous lesson in this course being lesson 7. Otherwise, some of the stuff in this lesson just won't make sense to you. Now let's get right into the agenda for this lesson. The first thing we're going to discuss is virtual hard disk formats. This will be followed by virtual hard disk types, after which we'll also discuss considerations for virtual hard disk formats and types. And then lastly, folks, we'll discuss where to store virtual hard disks. So before we jump into the gist of things, guys, remember to hit that like button and also to show me some love in the comment section. It doesn't go unnoticed when you guys do that. Also, if you don't want to miss out on free training like this, remember to hit that subscribe button to the channel. Otherwise, you're not going to receive those notifications. Okay, and now we can jump right into the things and start things off with storage options in Hyper-V. All right, guys, first of all, when it comes to storage for virtual machines, you can probably guess it's going to be virtual since the machines itself is virtual. Virtual machines use what we call virtual hard disks. Just like your real physical server or your real physical computer has a physical hard drive in it, your virtual servers and computers still work exactly the same in concept, except their hard disks are virtual instead of physical. The questions you should be asking here though is where do we store these virtual hard drives and how do we store them? This will all be answered shortly. Now with regards to these virtual hard disks, a virtual hard disk is a special file format that represents a traditional hard disk drive. Inside a virtual hard disk you can configure partitions, files and folders. Okay so you might be wondering how do you create a virtual hard disk? Well, this can be done via multiple ways. So I'll give you four of those. The first method you can use, which is probably the most common one out of the lot, is via the good old fashioned Hyper-V Manager Console. This is one I myself use most often, but it also depends on the situation I'm in, obviously. So depending on the situation, I might use it, I might not, but it is my preferred method to actually go and create a hard drive. A second method would be to use the Disk Management Console. Yep, the Disk Management Console, guys. It's not just used for normal computer and server disks and partitions. It can also, in fact, also be used to manage and create virtual hard disks. How about that, eh? The third method on my list is via the Disk Part Command Line Tool. For those of you who prefer to use the good old fashioned command line tools, I know some of you guys are command line gurus or partial gurus as some of you guys might say. So if you're a command line kind of guy, disk part command line tool might be your go-to tool. And then our fourth method is via the new-vhd Windows PowerShell commandlet. So that's not obviously for the PowerShell gurus or the guys who just prefer to do things via PowerShell. So there you have it folks, that is where you can go about creating yourself a virtual hard disk. Now when creating these virtual hard disks, something you need to be aware of is you have different virtual hard disk formats, which brings us to our next topic. So what is meant by virtual hard disk formats? That's basically the file extension at the back, just like you get mp3 files and .mp4 files and .pdf files, just to name a few. Virtual hard disks also get different file extensions. You get .vhd, .vhdx, .vhds, and the list goes on. Way in the beginning when virtual machines were still relatively new, we didn't actually have that many types. But now we do, and each has their own sets of benefits. So just like I said before, the different types you get are as follows. The first one is .vhd. Second one, .vhdx, and the third one being VHDS. All three of these are virtual hard drive or virtual hard disk types. The first one we have here on the list is VHD, also being the oldest one out of the three. 
So this old puppy was supported all the way back from Civil 2008, Civil 2008 R2. And back then it obviously had a bunch of restrictions, but none of them were really a problem up until now. Like with most things in life. I mean, back in the day we had PCs of only like one gig of RAM or less, and that was fine but for back then. Now, however, not so much. These days we need more benefits. And the old restrictions which were not an issue back then is an issue right now. So like I said, it's, it's kind of like comparing an old computer from the 10, 20 years ago to today's computers. Back then we had way less RAM and way less hard drive space on those computers. But back then that was fine because it met our needs. Now, however, we have a need for much more and the old computers simply won't cut it anymore. You can basically say the same about these virtual hard disk drives. The VHD virtual disk is old, but back then it was still fine. It's still, however, surprisingly very, very widely used, mind you. So don't cut it out of the game just yet. So yes, it might be the oldest one out of the three, but it's probably still one of the most widely used ones out of the three. And I think one of the main reasons for that is, is because a lot of companies made their existing virtual machines a very long time ago, some of them as far back as 10 years ago, and most of these companies just never really, well, upgraded, I guess. So when you've got the time, it might be advisable to go and upgrade yourself to one of the newer, better technologies, which gives you more better benefits. So something you should know about VHD is the fact that it's limited to two terabytes in storage and that it has a limited performance. Now this might sound like a lot of space to you, some of you, but anyone watching this that has already worked in server environments will tell you otherwise. Two terabytes is nothing in real server environment, guys. At least these days, it's basically nothing. Maybe about five, 10 years ago, it would have been something, but these days, two terabytes, that's nothing in a proper server room environment. Now, when Windows Server 2012 came out, they introduced the second virtual hardest type on our list being VHDX, which is also the second oldest, obviously, on the list. Compared to the previous VHD, the VHDX offers benefits like VHDX file can be up to 64 terabytes in size, way bigger than the two terabytes that the VHD offers, right? I mean, VHD was two terabytes, VHDX is up to 64 terabytes. That is a difference. The .VHDX file structure minimizes the chance that a disk will become corrupted if the host server suffers an unexpected power outage, which is probably going to happen. Bear in mind, this does not mean you won't have this corruption. It simply drastically minimizes the chances of this happening. It's still better than nothing though, right? So, you know, minimizing the chance compared to having no minimizing at all, I suppose that's better than nothing. The VHDX format supports better alignment when deployed to larger sector disks. And also, VHDX allows larger block sizes for dynamically expanding and differencing disks, which will provide better performance for workloads. Now, those differencing disks, we are going to be talking about them more a little bit later, but basically child hard drives. We like to call them child disks. The third one and the last one on our list is the youngest, obviously, or should I say the latest out of the lot. The VHDS was introduced in Windows Server 2016 and is specific to shared virtual hard disks, guys. This format is a type of virtual hard disk that multiple virtual machines can access simultaneously for high availability with clustering. You can also convert between virtual hard disk formats if you ever find yourself needing to do that. Just keep in mind though, when you do so, a new virtual hard disk is created and the contents of your old existing virtual hard disks will be copied to the new one. Therefore, ensure you have sufficient disk space to perform this conversion. So a lot of people think, oh, okay, I'm just going to convert from one hard disk format to another. It is not that simple. When you do that, it's effectively creating a new virtual hard disk and your old content is copied from the old one to the new one. So it's going to occupy a lot of space. So the larger the old one is, that obviously is going to influence the new one as well because it's going to go and make a clone just in a different format. So definitely keep that in mind, guys. All right, folks, let's move on to our next main topic on our list, which is virtual hard disk types. So we just covered the formats and now we'll do the types. 
Windows Server supports multiple virtual hard disk types, and in addition to the different hard disk formats, virtual hard disk types have varying benefits and drawbacks. The type of hard disk you select will vary depending on your needs, obviously. Obviously, as you guys can imagine, every company has their own unique needs and requirements, just like humans. And what are the different types you ask? I will give you guys four of them. The first one is called fixed size. This type of virtual hard disk allocates all of the space immediately. This minimizes fragmentation, which in turn also enhances performance. So basically, when you go and create yourself a new virtual hard disk, whatever size you decide to make it, it will chop off that space immediately and give it to the virtual machine. If I were to do this via Hyper-V, for example, and let's say I have a 500 gig hard drive on my host PC, if I were to make a 50 gig fixed size drive, it will chop off that from the 500 gigs and give that to the virtual machine. So my host PC will only have a 450 gig hard drive left and the other 50 gigs would have been chopped off, figuratively speaking, and would have been given to the virtual machine. It's going, to be remain, it's going to remain inaccessible to the host machine for the most part until one day you go and delete that, I suppose. The second one up on the list is dynamically expanding. This type of virtual hard disk allocates space as required, which is more efficient because there is no blank space in a virtual hard disk. If the virtual hard disk is .vhdx formatted and dynamically expanding, then it also dynamically shrinks when you remove data. How about them apples? Dynamically shrinking does not happen while the virtual machine is running though. It occurs automatically when the virtual machine is shut down. So if you don't shut down the machine, it's not going to shrink if you ended up deleting data. You're going to have to shut that machine down to actually see the results. The third one on the list is pass through. This type of virtual hard disk provides direct access to physical disk or internet SCSI LAN. In some cases, this offers better performance than storing data in a .bhd or .bhdx format virtual hard disk. And then the fourth one and the last one on the list is differencing. This type of dynamically expanding virtual hard disk stores data that has changed when compared to a parent disk. Differencing disks are typically used to reduce data storage requirements. For example, in a classroom, you could have 10 differencing disks based on the same parent disk that contains a system prepped image of Windows Server 2019. You could use these 10 different differencing disks to create 10 different virtual machines. So it's one parent disk and 10 different differencing virtual machines. So you're going to have basically 10 virtual machines and instead of occupying the space of 10 traditional virtual machines, it's going to occupy drastically a lot less space, guys. So if you find yourself in a situation like that, and maybe you should go and look at this solution. Okay, folks, so now that we have a better idea what virtual hard disk types are, let's have a look at some considerations for virtual hard disk formats and types. The first thing you want to keep in mind with these disks is unless you're creating virtual hard disks that must be accessed on Windows Server 2008 or Windows Server 2008 R2, you should preferably going to go and use VHDX formatted virtual hard disks, which is newer and better, not the VHD, unless you have no choice in the matter, I suppose. Something else to be mindful of with these disks is, in the past, only fixed size virtual hard disks were suitable for production. However, for VHDX formatted virtual hard disks, dynamically expanding virtual hard disks offer almost the same level of performance and are supported for production workloads. How about that? Dynamically expanding virtual hard disks show the free space available based on the maximum size specified for the virtual hard disk, rather than the actual physical space available. It is possible though to actually physically run out of disk space on a Hyper-V host when dynamically expanding virtual hard disks show free space available. With virtual hard disks, you can link multiple differencing disks, but as the number of linked disks increases, unfortunately, the performance tends to decrease as well. Some other things you folks might encounter one day is if you find yourself needing to modify a parent virtual hard disk, just be aware the differencing disk will no longer be valid. This might catch some of you by surprise if you're doing this for the first time and cause a bit of confusion. The last thing on my list here to be mindful of is if you ever end up moving 
a parent virtual hard disk, you will need to relink it with the differencing disk. So if there's 10 differencing disks, you're going to have to go and relink all 10 of them. If there's 20 of them, you're going to have to go and re relink all 20 of those differencing disks. Those child disks is what we call them. A lot of people actually call this just a child disk instead of calling it the differencing disk because it's just easier that way. So when you move the parent disks, the disks don't know where the other one is anymore. So you're basically going to go and have to reestablish the link. Sounds complicated, but actually it is pretty easy to go and do. I just normally do it via the good old fashioned Hyper-V manager console. So if you were to go and open Hyper-V, on the right hand menu, way on the right, it's normally somewhere in the middle, you'll see an option that says inspect disk. When you choose that, just choose your child disk that you want to go and inspect. There might be one, there might be 10 of them, there might be 20 of them. Choose one of those child disks because it's probably going to be corrupt now because it doesn't know where mommy or where daddy is. Choose the child disk or differentiate disk, whatever you want to go and call that, and you follow the little wizard. Just click next, next, next. It will allow you to inspect the disk and you'll also see it's going to give you an error of some kind because it doesn't know where the parent is. And at the same time, somewhere along the line, it's going to show you exactly what the name is of the parent hard drive is looking for. And at that point in time, they also give you like a little browse button that you can actually go and click on. And should you go and click on the browse button, it allows you to browse your PC so you can go and browse wherever this new parent drive might be. You just drive to the new, uh, browse to the new drive. You just browse to the new location, you click on the parent hard drive, and there you go. You're back on your way. So from that point forward, if you start that virtual machine, if you were to go and mount that differencing disk, you're going to see it's actually going to work. Okay, so with that said, let's talk a little bit about where do we actually store virtual hard disks. A key factor when provisioning virtual machines is to ensure correct placement of virtual hard disks. Virtual hard disk performance can affect virtual machine performance drastically. So if you're going to go and place your hard drives in the wrong place, or if you're going to manage them wrong, your virtual machine in turn will also get influenced by this. Servers that otherwise are well provisioned with RAM, processor capacity, can still experience poor performance if the storage system is overwhelmed. So yeah, you can store virtual hard disks on local disks, which is actually usually where I go and do it in my personal capacity. You can also go and put them on a SAN, in other words, a storage area network, or good old fashioned SMB 3.0 file shares. Here's a few factors to consider when you plan the location of virtual hard disk files. The first of which is high performance connection to storage. You can locate virtual hard disk files on local or remote storage. When you locate them on remote storage, you need to ensure that there is adequate bandwidth and minimal latency between the host and the remote storage. Slow network connections to storage or connections where there is latency obviously result in poor virtual machine performance. Redundant storage is also a factor to consider. The volume on which the virtual hard disk files are stored should be fault tolerant. This is regardless of whether the virtual hard disk is stored on a local disk or remote SAN, potato, potato, it does not matter. You need to make sure it's fault tolerant. So in the event of something failing, nothing should be offline. I think that's a golden rule in IT, so you guys should probably know that already. It is common for hard disks to fail. Therefore, virtual machine and Hyper-V host should remain in operation after a disk fails. Obvious, right? Replacing failed disks should not affect the operation of Hyper-V, host, or virtual machines. We also have high performance. The storage device on which you store virtual hard disk files should have excellent input-output characteristics. Many enterprises use hybrid solid-state drives in RAID 1 and RAID 0 arrays to achieve maximum performance and redundancy. So as you guys might remember, RAID 0 is more for performance and RAID 1 is more for redundancy. Multiple virtual machines that are running simultaneously on the same storage can place tremendous input and output burden on disk subsystems. And in case you guys don't know, input output is normally referred to as I-O or I slash O. So I slash O is normally input output, just in case you guys don't know. Anyway, so therefore you must ensure that you can choose high performance storage if you do not 
virtual machine performance will unfortunately suffer underneath that. Lastly, guys, something else very important is adequate growth space. So if you have configured virtual hard disks to grow automatically, which is what a lot of us go and do, ensure there is enough space into which the files can actually grow. So you need to plan for future growth is what we say. In addition, carefully monitor growth so that you are not surprised when a virtual hard disk fills the volume that you allocated to the host it. Keeping your finger on things and properly planning is key here. Well, folks, I hope you learned something in this lesson of the Microsoft AZ800 course. If you did, remember to hit that like button. And also remember to hit that subscribe button for more free training content like this. If you guys feel like you want to support me or my channel, you can also go and find that details in the video description down below. I do have a PayPal. I do have a Patreon. And like usual, guys, stay tuned for the next lesson. Stay frosty. Let me. Hey. Mm -hmm.